Hello and welcome back to Project 380. In this video, I'm going to be installing the ECU. So if you're upgrading your MX-5 with a turbo or a supercharger, fitting upgraded injectors, sequential ignition, or doing something else crazy, you're definitely going to need something to control it all. And that's where a standalone ECU comes into play. The original ECU in the car, you can't really do a lot with. So you can't tell it it's running on four coil packs rather than two. You can't really adjust the injector duty cycle, and you can't really play with the fueling. And when you're upgrading it, like I have with a big turbocharger, you really want to play with all those settings to get the most out of it. Now, there are some ways around this instead of using an ECU, like an FMU and a few other bits, but you really won't get the benefits like you do with a standalone ECU. Now there are a fair few ECUs to choose from, and I've gone for the ME221 Generation 2 board. Now I'll be completely honest, I bought this before it even started the turbo build. The idea for this build was actually to slap an ECU and a turbo on it and go drifting. But obviously, that's not happened. So I actually purchased this well before the build, and I purchased this from Scuzzle Motorsports, which as I'm sure a lot of you are aware, they're no longer around anymore. But this ME221 is actually from Motorsports Electronics. You can buy this directly from them or some other outlets like Boffy Racing. Now, if I had waited till I'm actually ready to put the ECU in, I probably would have bought the ME442, which has a few additional features. But since I bought this over three years ago, this one's going in for now. Being a plug and play ECU I can easily change this out in the future. So let's rip the standard ECU out and get installing the ME221. Before you start ripping your ECU out it's a very good idea to disconnect your battery or turn your isolator switch off. Now this part of the tutorial is only valid for the right hand drive as the left hand drive the ECU is located in a different place but on the right hand drive we're right under here in the passenger footwell. Now this is going to be easier with the passenger seat out and the glove box out. I've had these out previously and I haven't reinstalled them as I knew I was going to have to do this job down here. But once they're out of the way and the carpet is unclipped from the side here you can roll this carpet back revealing a little bit of polystyrene and a metal plate lift that polystyrene out of the way and this metal plate is held on with five nuts three down the bottom and two up the top here for some reason years ago i never actually secured this back down and don't know where the nuts are so that comes straight out and behind there is the ecu holding the ecu there will be one additional bolt up here and that should be able to lift out and be unplugged When you're picking your standalone ECU, there's a few things you've got to consider. What year the car is and how many plugs the original ECU has got. So mine's a very, very early 1998 with a free plug ECU. So I chose the correct ME221 with free plugs. Now this new ECU goes directly into the old ECU's case. And we can do that by undoing the four Phillips screws on the back. Then there's one Phillips screw holding the board into the box. Now we can't simply just replace this old ECU for the new one. We've got a little bit of work to do to the box first. So the new ECU has a few features which require this box to be modified. The ME221 comes with an inbuilt four bar map sensor, which needs a vacuum line to it. And there's no hole in the box for a vacuum line to run through. So we're going to have to drill our own. It's also got a port for a USB cable. This is going to allow us to put a tune on the car and to read some data. And there's an options port, which I'll cover in a little bit. But first off, let's start with the reference line to the map sensor. The nipple on the map sensor faces this way. So ideally, I want the vacuum line running in this way, which is going to be somewhere over here. So I'm going to work out where that is, mark the hole and drill it. So I've drilled a hole in the side, which is the perfect size for a grommet, which is just big enough for me to put the vacuum hose in, which will hopefully meet up with the map sensor about here perfectly. Now you don't have to do this next step, but I'm going to, and that is to permanently install the USB. Permanently installing this is gonna make it quicker to tune and read all the data without having to peel back the carpet and open up this case again. Now that goes on the exact opposite side 
to where the boost reference line is. So I'm going to do the same this side as I did this side, mark a hole, drill it and put a grommet in it. This ECU cable actually came with my ECU, so just make sure you get the right USB cable first. Hopefully that's in the right place to meet the ECU. Now this big plug on the side is the options port and this of course gives you more options such as additional injectors running the two extra coils and some other cool features. Now I don't know whether I'm going to utilize all of those but I definitely need a few of them. So we need a plug that goes in that and for the ME221 generation 2 board you can have to purchase yourself a 5757 20 pin male connector block which plugs in nicely to the options port. So I'm going to spend a little bit of time off of camera pinning out this connector, working out which wires I need, and then I'll work out where I need to put a hole for all the extra wires. Now that took a little bit of working out, but as you can see, I've cut a rectangle hole into this frame as the options port plug sits pretty much flush up against the box. So now at least I could put all my wires into the option plug. It's gonna be a little bit tricky to remove, but I cut a little extra access round here to release that tab. Now this ECU is almost ready to put in, but there's one thing we've got to change on the board itself before we permanently install it into the bracket. And on the ME221, there is two little switches right here. That is for the different fuel pumps. Now you can only have one on at a time, and if you can see right here, the top one is Euro and UK, and the bottom is JDM and US. Now because my Mark II is a JDM import, I've flicked that bottom switch over to on. You'll soon know if you've got this round the wrong way, as the fuel pump just won't prime. But other than that, this is now ready to install back into the box. Label it up and that's ready to install in the car. Since the new ECU is in the old ECU box, it installs back exactly the same way. This metal cover will get installed at a later date once I've finished wiring the options port. The USB cable I think I'm going to have running out of the glove box, which too is going to be installed at a later date. I've still got something to do around here first which leaves us with the boost reference vacuum line. Now this has to go to the engine. So I'm gonna feed it through the bulkhead somewhere up here, and I'm gonna feed it through this wire and grommet here just under the wiper motor. Then I ran that line neatly behind all these components and out over here. There's a little bit of red tape on the end to remind me what it is, but that needs to go to the inlet manifold, which at the minute is actually removed as I'm in the middle of working on some other stuff over in that area. So the top of the Skunk 2 manifold is off the car and that reference line needs to go somewhere in the top of the inlet manifold. As you may remember, I'm using the Skunk 2 manifold and that reference line can go to one of these front two ports here. Just make sure the line is nice and secure on these fittings, not kinked anywhere. And if you are going to use a cable tie to secure it, make sure that cable tie isn't pulled too tight to cut off the air. So that is the first steps into installing a standalone ECU into the MX-5. There are still a few more steps that we need to go through before we put that ignition on, and they are coming very soon. There's just a few more jobs on the car I need to get out of the way first before I go any further with the ECU. But that is the physical part of the ECU installed into the car. Let me know if this video helped you in the comments down below. As per usual, like, comment, share, and subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you in the next one.